Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. I'm so glad you're here as I wrap up my coverage of their trip to South Africa and revisit all the cringe. It really has been incredible to go back through all this and I've forgotten so many details of how awful they both were. But it seems like especially Megan on this trip and uh, it's just been incredible to go back through it. And I thought we'd wrap this up by taking a look at Cora. And if you're new here and you're like, Jen, what's Cora? It's that question and answer site where people post public questions and other people answer them. It's usually a lot of fun, especially when you look up anything having to do with Harold and Fraud. So I specifically looked at South Africa related questions, and I don't think you'll be disappointed much as Megan was in this photo for the gift she received. Look at that face. Can you imagine pulling that face when somebody gives you a gift? Um, but I don't think you'll be disappointed by these questions and these answers. So let's get into it. Thanks for being here, everyone. Hong Kong. Right, starting with this one here, what are the South Africans' reaction to Meghan Markle disparaging their country, spreading lies like a fire in the place they stayed, suggesting bad accommodations, and comparing her reception to Mandela. I didn't even go into that, but how crazy is that? Remember, she claimed that her marriage to Doofus was so celebrated, she compared it to Nelson Mandela's release from prison, to which his grandchildren spoke out. It was it was in the interview in the Cut magazine. His grandchildren spoke out and said, no, no, that's no, not okay. Which this person replies, nutmeg, great start, is delusional. The pair stayed in a beautiful house well cared for, catered for, and yes, even fed it. Feed it? Fed it. I never say that right. However, the woman's demands were excessive and gratitude in short supply. I didn't see any gratitude. In fact, on Patreon, I went into um, an interview I found with Valentine Lowe where it just sounds like they were awful in front of the camera and awful behind the camera. Her recollections are at variance with actuality as the Mandela story has also been totally debunked. It, is it substances that make her so forgetful? Question mark. Nutmeg lied under a... I think that's giving her an easy out. I don't think she deserves that. I think she just tells these lies. Time will bring much to light that has been concealed, I'm sure, and as a Brit living happily in South Africa... I can only extend my thanks to the good old U.S. of A. for keeping her away from the U.K. and us here in South Africa. I wish we were so lucky we are not. But yeah, I mean, I've been over it. She seems to really have it out for South Africa in particular and South Africans. And <laughs> instead of highlighting what she was there to highlight, made the tour all about herself uh, both of them did. It sounds like he was an angry prick off behind the scenes. Again, going with what Valentine Lowe was explaining. And she was like, me the whole time, right? Uh, with the, nobody's asked me if I'm okay. And all the, all the nonsense from the heater fire to everything else. It's just all BS. Again, what a disaster trip. It seems to be the case everywhere they go now. In Nigeria, anyone? This person says Meg lies through her expensive veneers as easily as falling off a log. Her economy with the actual truth is pathological. That's a great way of describing that. She really believes what she has said about her life and her many invented achievements and doesn't think that she'll ever be caught out by mere fact and available records which always eventually uh, refute those claims. Will she ever learn? So HG went into this and explained it, that she just needs this attention. I'm not going to even try to <laughs> explain narcissism. He does much better than me, but she needs this attention. So in the moment she says these things, she convinces herself they're real. I'm not making excuses. I'm saying that is pathological and absolutely crazy to see. She has created her own Ooh, paracosm, great word, where she is above all others and princess and queen of the universe, where her oh so vast knowledge and intelligence are far superior for her fellow planet dwellers. That explains so much. I believe the same thing. It sounds so silly. You know, I tease about the clothes, but it is. It's like, I, I know best. I, it, it makes sense that I wear beige nonstop and I'm completely a wrinkled mess because I look the greatest in everything and no stylist can tell me otherwise. I heard rumblings that the girl that pulled her off the red carpet or, or brought her attention to, hey, it's time to go, 
was immediately terminated. If that's the case, then of course, I mean, that makes sense to me because of course Megan's going to think she knows best and be completely unaware that people are like, hey, get off. It's not your turn anymore. Bye. I even love the wording of this one because they say, what happened to Meghan Markle while she was on holiday in South Africa? Yeah, that's pretty much how I would describe it too. It seemed as if those two thought that they would just be on holiday. It doesn't seem like they were doing actual work. We saw her at that women's group where she was just making it all about herself, ignoring what people were trying to tell her and ignoring local traditions. I don't even know why I'm raising my voice. It's nothing new. Uh, it's what she does. Ignores everybody else, makes it about herself. So um, again, uh, using the word holiday is a brilliant uh, way to describe that. So uh, what happened to her while she was on holiday in South Africa? During her first visit before Archie, she took mountains of suitcases full of clothes and lashings and jewels, plus her photography team, so she could photograph her next to the extreme poverty in her thousands of pounds outfits. She didn't raise as much as a fingernail to help the locals. Real gutter trash. Then her second visit, where according to her, she stayed in a hut. She called it like housing complex, something like that. Have you seen the photos of the governor general's house? It's actually called a mansion. She wrecked, let's see, she reckoned her heater caught fire when Archie was in the room. But no, we found out since Archie was not in the room. They spoke out and said Archie was not in the room. Who puts a heater on in South African heat? Yeah, I pointed that out too. It was actually South African summertime when they were there. Uh, then she moaned that she was still expected to work. Think this is more of the usual lies. Never believe a thing this harpy says. Why did people in South Africa, I'm sorry, I can't read this without laughing, <laughs> dance? on the street when Meghan Markle married Doofus, as she's not from South Africa. Answer, she lied. The people of South Africa danced in the streets the day Nelson Mandela was finally freed. Meghan Markle dishonored his memory when she pretended they danced in the streets for her, too. Mandela's son, I believe it was his grandson, called her out for the arrogant lie, and she's no longer welcome in that country, to which I say, cool. Looks like I'm headed to South Africa. You guys got it right. We did not. Oh, gosh. It doesn't, it wouldn't stop her. And do you remember for a little bit of time, they pretended like they considered living in Africa? Hmm. Yeah, I'm sure that was the plan. This person is short and sweet and to the point and says, it didn't happen. Me gain is a sociopath for her entire life. Yeah, I agree. Question, how are Prince Harry and Meghan Markle responding to the ridicule that they're facing over the perceived victimhood, including accusations of crying in a castle? Anybody else hear that in Borat voice? King of the castle, king of the castle. They responded the same way they always respond, by playing victim even more. Meghan and Harry are two of the most oppressed people to ever live. It really is hilarious when you think about, that's why I love drawing attention to this stuff. Just go back and think about any time period and they'll go over all their grievances. Let's see. I know because they tell me over and over and over and over. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's entertaining. Ding, ding, ding. Welcome to my channel. Question. Why are people upset with Meghan Markle for saying she was approached by a cast member, the Lion King? <laughs> oh my God. Who claimed her wedding to that one was celebrated in South... <laughs> Oh, it says South America. I think it said South Africa. Just like the day Nelson Mandela was freed from prison after 27 years. Answer, let me put it this way. If I told you someone told me that my wedding was celebrated in her country just like the day the Emancipation Proclamation was made, wouldn't that make me seem like an egotistical, disrespectful, delusionally narcissistic, attention-seeking arsehole? Ding, ding, ding. You've just described Maggie Poo. What do any South African contributors think of Megan's assertion that South Africa's celebration of their wedding was akin to the release of Mandela? Answer. Seriously? Look, it must be stated in fairness that I consider Meghan Markle to be the absolute epitome of a narcissistic social climber. She gives the term Karen a good name. I know, I hate using the name Karen. There's lovely Karens. Let's use it, Meghan. Um, although there's lovely Megans too, just not this one. Let it also be said that those two brats deserve each other. Not a great supporter. Well, I'm going to disagree with you there. Uh, the British monarchy here, but I do recognize class when I see it. We have a term for those two in South Africa, plain 
common. Spoken in Afrikaans accent, it sounds as bad as it is. Comparable to the release of Nelson Mandela? Question mark. They are not fit to shine his shoes. And hell no, I do not consider their wedding or any subsequent event in their humdrum lives to be remotely comparable. That's exactly the general consensus that I've I've heard that uh, some people in South Africa said, you know, we heard a few rumblings, but it was nothing, nothing. It was barely a non-event. Nobody was dancing. Full of crap. I think that there were many in South Africa that were prepared to give them a chance. Certainly Harry was popular with those of us who cared enough, tiny minority, uh, but we know bovine manure when we see it. Oh, and I'm not surprised that Megan tried to hitch her name to Mandela's, nor am I surprised that Harry claimed, yeah, he took out all those people. Plain common. You know, this person brings up an excellent point. They think that they should be billed for all the accommodations, since they spoke so poorly of them, of the food, of the flights, since they didn't do a very good job on the royal tour there and did not bring any awareness to any of the causes that they were meant to do and just pretty much made the whole, you know, what show about themselves. I think that's an excellent idea. Question, what is your reaction to Megan being visibly upset and emotional in an interview for the ITV documentary, Harry and Megan, an African Journey? Answer, the term crocodile tears comes to mind. She tries to play the audience to make people feel sorry for her. She's a classic narcissist playing the victim. Luckily, most people see through her act. If she and Harry hate the limelight so much, give up the titles and the free taxpayers' money, free police protection, free holidays, parties, film premieres, clothes, helicopter, plane rides, go live in obscurity somewhere. If she hates the limelight so much, why become an actress in the first place? Why do an article in Vogue? Why do anything that draws attention to her, like upstaging her husband's cousin on her wedding day by flaunting her stomach in a way that would get people commenting if she's pregnant? Then announce it. They say a day later it was actually at the wedding. She's a narcissist and a bad actress and the documentary showed it. So same question, what was your reaction? This person had some fun with this answer. Thank you for asking. Not many people have asked if I'm okay. Um, (laughs) It was just about as real as Prince Harry crying at the Well Child's Award uh, when he actually started to laugh and lowered his head to hide it. Do we know about this? I need to go back and find that. I need to get Dylan on this. What's it, What are they talking about? I need to find that. And acted like he had, he was overcome. She had obviously been practicing that doe-eyed poor me look. And we already know that she can pretend to cry at the drop of a hat or more appropriately, the click of a camera. Circling back to the fire that didn't happen, in my opinion, um, this person had an interesting theory, so I won't read this whole thing, but basically, okay, so if she was telling the truth, which I don't believe she is, that Archie nearly burned in a fire and all this, and then she whines about having to go do these events, okay, why not send Harry to these events. If she really felt that strongly, bring Archie with her or stay back. But she chose not to and tried to blame the royal family. But this person posits, well, what if it's not that? What if it's because she didn't want to miss out? She wanted to make sure she was in the public or the publicity coverage and she wanted to make it all about herself. So with a step up her lip, she managed and decided to go with Harry. Never mind that Harry could have gone to the event himself and excused Megan's non-appearance. Never mind that any mother in her right mind would have chosen to stay with their child after an experience like that. I don't believe there's an experience. Not, let's see, but not sweet old Megan. She decided to make a BS lie about her. Sounds to me like a non I think it means like a fiction story. One reason I won't allow my teenage girls to listen to this bunch of nonsense. And finally, somebody brings up the point that we all had in that disgusting video we saw. The way she treated those mothers at that event in South Africa. And why did she donate Archie's clothes to a mother's event? And and again, I pointed out the time. Totally reasonable for people to give used clothing like that. And dare I say, even sustainable. But that's not what this was. This was making a show out of giving 
the little people, Archie's things and making it about herself and putting herself in the middle and making these women fawn over Archie's clothes. It's really a disgusting act. But this person had a great answer. It says, good deeds should be done with intention, not for attention. She will never do something like that. She could have privately given, um, but never. That would never be the case. She'll have to do things for attention and, um, yeah, that was no different. And uh, again, showed her true colors and her disgusting nature. Again, I'm not leaving out Harold of this. He's equally as appalling and disgusting as well. Thank you guys for watching. It has been so fun to go back through that South Africa of it all. If there's another event or experience or trip or something you want me to revisit, please leave me in the comments below. And I'm glad to go back over it. And thank you guys for watching. And I can't wait to bring you more stuff like this. I truly hope you all have the best day and I will talk to you guys again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>